How we going guys? Welcome to another Hogs Vlog. We're live. World Test Match Championship. Didn't get started on day one, but uh, we got there on day two. And I've got the little finale day one up the top there because yesterday was uh, the only day's play that we've got. So we're going to call it day one. Uh, we've got... Mumped uh, Yadav, how are you going, mate? Cricket lover, good to see you joining us. And Vishnu Jayanti and uh, Atal Baral, thanks very much for getting online again, mate. And uh, I know that you're enjoying the test match. Uh, Shidat Aran, uh, Kalakuri uh, Anarad, I hope I've said that right. Keshav Lakara, how are you going, guys? And uh, thanks very much for joining me. So let's get into it. I think it's even Stevens out the present moment. Uh, India had a little bit of luck yesterday, but they deserved it. So that's what we're going to discuss live on Hogs Vlog. Roll bumper, please, Shubs. Well, guys, yesterday I thought New Zealand, with the new ball in the first 10 overs, got a little bit greedy. They went away from their renowned game plan, and that's hitting a good length. They just try to go a little bit too full and uh, just trying to be greedy with a bit of extra swing and trying to get too many early wickets. So chasing the game rather than keeping it nice and patient and pulling that length back on a good length. And they paid the price. Uh, India got away with a good start, scoring out four and over at the 10 over mark. So um, well done to Rowett and Shubman Gill. Now, Patient Rowett. I was very impressed with the way that he batted yesterday. He changed his game plan. This is our first talking point. 34 runs off 68 balls. Got to remember that he was going out a good clip early on. But one thing that I loved with his patience was he's prepared to leave that ball outside off stump on a good length. But when New Zealand over-pitched the ball, he went after it and scored beautiful boundaries. But he was hitting with the swing. His only downfall when Jamison came on uh, and, and got that wicket caught out third slip was that instead of going with the swing and uh, it was just shorter of a length than the ones that he'd been driving before, he was caught in two mines and that's because of his dominance in white ball cricket and he was just getting into the rhythm where he'd like to play through that, uh, through that region. So as he's playing the shot, he got caught in two mines and he's going, I should leave this. And he's changed the face of his bat rather than hitting with the swing and trying to hit straight down the ground. And uh, just a little lax of concentration there cost Robert Sharma. But yesterday, he batted beautifully. Didn't lose his wicket to after the 20th over. And remember, a couple of days ago, we were talking about that uh, little dominant period of 20 overs. You don't want Virat Kohli to get in there before that 20 over period because he only averaged 14 there. So Robert Sharma did a fantastic job. His opening partner, Shubman Gill. Uh, I'm going to say Shubman Gill too because... I think just in his short space of uh, test history, he has changed his game. He's a lot more compact in this test match than what he was here in Australia. And there was one little thing that I, I thought here in Australia that where he was um, just, uh, j there was a slight weakness there was he, he was he was very much leg side of the ball. He wasn't covering off stump. He was playing away from his body. But yesterday he was covering that off stump and he was waiting for the ball to come late and he wasn't uh, overawed by the extra swing. So for me, he is improved admirably. And uh, just the way that he played off the back foot as well, I thought it was just sensational getting across, uh, uh, covering that off stump, but the pull shots he was playing was beautiful. It was divine. But Shubman Gill, there would have been a lot of commentators if he got out early, walking down and uh, walking down to the fast bowlers. If he nicked off, a lot of commentators would have said, "Look, that was poor batting. Uh, shouldn't have been doing that." But I'm just glad that he backed his game plan uh, to put the New Zealand bowlers off their line and length to cover the swing and seam and uh, just go out there and be brave. And that's what you've got to do. You've got to adjust to the conditions and sometimes you've got to do something different than the norm. And sometimes it's going to come off, sometimes it's not. Yes, he had a little bit of luck yesterday doing it, but in doing it, um, he put the pressure 
back on the New Zealand bowlers, and that's what you've got to do in a final. So great courage from Shubman Gill, and well done to him getting through that 20-over uh, period and putting pressure on those New Zealand bowlers and wearing them down. And as we saw, the New Zealand bowlers lost a bit of pace as the game went on. So he's done his job for the team. So well done about that. Oh, my God. Uh, excuse me. I've got to talk about Virat Kohli. Well, Virat Kohli, if we look at the one-day uh, record when it comes to finals, it's not as good as general play, and that's something that he's been working on uh, or wants to rectify. And this is probably the biggest test match on centre stage, a World Test Match Championship final. And the way he batted yesterday was superb. He batted out of his crease. He did that a couple of years ago over there in England, but then he went back uh, to batting the crease a couple of years later when they had a tour there, and it uh, was a little bit of a downfall. So he's gone back at batting outside the crease, trying to cover the swing, put the pressure back on the New Zealand bowlers. And uh, I said... If he wasn't in before the 20th over, there's a big chance that he's going to make a big score. So he's 44 not out right now. And uh, he and Ajinka Rahani look so comfortable out in the middle, even though the ball is swinging uh, greatly. They're not getting too flustered with it. They're prepared to let the ball beat the outside edge, not get uh, too worried about it, get on with the next ball and just watch it like a hawk. So very much uh, India, in a sense, I think are just in front of New Zealand, but the way that the ball's swinging, New Zealand, if they get the right length, they can put pressure back on India. And if they lose two early wickets here, India, uh, and Jadeja and Ashwin are in quite, quite early, with that long tail of India, New Zealand can fight their way back into this test match. Now, with rain around, the only uh, thing that uh, I'm concerned of with getting a result here is India are in the box seat. If they get 300 and can bowl New Zealand out cheaply and force the follow-on, there's a huge chance here that uh, the rain won't affect the result and India uh, can get the result that they want. So they need to get up to 300. So Rishpa Pant is going to have uh, a big impact there with his fast scoring when he comes out, and hopefully he can deliver that. All right, let's get into the question time. This is the time that I absolutely love, getting your questions, and I've done that in uh, less than eight minutes. You beauty, Hoggy. Um... Shrinidhi, uh, how are you going, mate? Do you think that New Zealand blundered by not playing even a single spinner, even though Ajaz Patel had performed really well in the past, he was not given the opportunity? Look, I think uh, New Zealand summed up the conditions really well. Um, they've gone in with a four-pace attack with De Grand and bowling uh, that fifth bowling option a number of times. Um, they really have utilised Santner a lot because of his extra batting rather than uh, Patel. So I think they're a little bit concerned there. Uh, but with the amount of swing they got yesterday, with the seam on the wicket, I think New Zealand did the right thing uh, by by going in with their strength. I don't think Patel's a, a, an out and or a genuine wicket taker at the moment. He hasn't got uh, enough experience there to play in this to, to, uh, Test Championship final. So I, th I think New Zealand have done the right thing by going with their strength. So yeah, you can you can sit there in hindsight and say they should have played the spinner. But, um, no, if, if I was selecting the New Zealand team, I would have done what they've done there, their strength. But a very good question, good observation there, um, Sinadu. And it's going to be very interesting to see how the Indian spinners uh, fare on this wicket because there are a few uh, footmarks developing on either side. Muhammad Farhan, how are you going? Since 90 overs have been lost in the first day and 30 overs in the second day, will the whole of sixth day come into play? How will the sixth day work here? Please explain. So basically, I think uh, with the next couple of days, they'll try and make up time by starting a little earlier and trying to uh, finish the game a little bit later to make up some of those overs. But when it comes to the sixth day, they're going to be playing the full day. So at the present moment, it's uh, come back because we've lost the first day. It's just going to be basically a five-day test match. So don't worry about the time too much. We are going to go into the sixth day. And um, with the way that the ball's moving, if India can get it in the right areas uh, and not chase the game, 
game like New Zealand did, they'll be able to get those early breakthroughs and put pressure back on New Zealand. So for me at the moment, it's India's game to lose, New Zealand's, uh, New Zealand's game to get back into the contest. So it's just a bit, it depends how India bowl in that first spell. So there's plenty of time to get uh, 20 wickets for India to win this test match with the way the conditions are. So... Don't uh, don't get too disheartened by the rain out the moment. Huge respect your work, Brad. You are a good analysis. Thanks very much for that, uh, Harshit Varma. Thank you very much for that. And um, I hope everything is well with you and your family where you are uh, in the world. And everyone over in there in India and America, um, everyone around the world, I hope all your family is well and you're all safe and happy and enjoying this uh, World Test Match Championship. Have you got the next question there, please, Shubs? Kartik Yadav. Hoggy, do you think a uh, major tournament should not be given to England due to rain and bad light? No, it, I think it's uh, perfect conditions. It's just a pity that the test match wasn't played out lords. Um, and, you know, we just get a little unlucky with the weather every now and then. And uh, this is where... Both teams have been exceptional. They've adjusted to the conditions. They've gone out there. They've played good, hard, respectful cricket. I'm liking the stares from the fast bowlers to some of the Indian batsmen and the smiles between uh, the batsman and bowler. So they're out there fighting hard, but they've got a lot of respect for each other and they're enjoying the contest. And I hope that's coming across to you guys out there as well. Um, both teams want to win, but both teams are playing it fair, fairly and squarely, and I'm I'm just enjoying the contest. So, for me, look uh, with with the rain around, with the seeming conditions and the swing, swinging conditions, I, I, there's a lot of time in this game for a result. So don't walk away from it thinking that rain's going to affect it. These two teams, uh, good swing bowling teams, are putting pressure on the opposition batting, and I think India are going to bowl bad, better than what New Zealand did uh, in the first. 30 overs when they they get to bowl out New Zealand. So next question, please, Shubs. Good question there, Kartik. Uh, Atal Barrow, how are you going, mate? Who was the most impressive player yesterday? Oh, look, I, I think both opening batsmen were absolutely sensational because they, they're they more free-flowing type players and they had to adjust their game to tough conditions and play patiently. And um, for, for me... They're the ones that put New Zealand bowlers on the back foot by being prepared to bat outside their crease, being prepared to walk down the wicket. Um, and, you know, to, to do that, it takes a lot of courage on day one of a test match where the ball is moving both ways prestigiously. So for me, the courage, uh, the willingness to try something new and the willing, willingness to do something different than uh, what everyone would expect them to do and, and to be forthright to the New Zealand bowlers, I think that was outstanding and that's probably been the moment of the test match at, uh, at the moment. And if India win this test match, it's because of that um, that forcefulness of the two openers in the first 10 overs against the likes of South and Bolt, who were just moving the ball both ways but uh, just couldn't counteract the mo movement of uh, both batsmen. So that's where th those two players have impressed me the most. Good question, that one. Okay, Rajan Padarida, uh, pa, <laughs> Padaridi, Padarida, Padarida. I hope I've got that right, Rajan. Um, your views on Indian women against England women, women? Look, I think they've been fantastic. The way that they saved that test match, they had fight right to the end. Um, they don't have as much experience in that regard than uh, what, what England do. And they're not too far off the mark. I'm, I'm really looking forward to them playing against Australia in uh, test match cricket. I think they should be playing five-day test matches. I thought it was a quality game. And um, I, think, uh, I think they should be playing more than one test match too in a series. I think they should be able to play a three-test match series um, out the most because women's cricket's improving. And the only way that you're going to get it to improve even more is by playing more test match cricket. So for me, India aren't too far off the mark. And uh, I wouldn't be, I'd give them probably, with the youth that are coming through right now, I'd probably give them four years um, before they start to be dominant like the, uh, the men's team. So 
Yeah, it might be even earlier than that, but I'm not pushing it too uh, too quickly. But I reckon in about four years' time, they they're going to be the team to beat, um, and they might knock Australia off the mantle in that regard. The women's team have been sensational and great stuff, uh, Rajan, for getting right behind the Indian cricket, uh, uh, the Indian women's cricket. Um, it's becoming a great spectacle. I think their game has improved immensely over the last decade, uh, especially in the T20 format. There's been some exciting matches there where you're just out the edge of your seat and they've got a lot of talent there too. So um, it's been sensational. So well done to the girls there. It was a great spectacle and a um, good advertisement for women's cricket. Good question that, Rajan. Very, very good. Oggy, what is a good score for India? Uh, this is from Daksh Aswell. Um, I'm not going to read all that out. Um, but Daksh, I think India, if they get around about 300, 320 on this wicket, I think it's going to be a great score. Uh, it will be a lot of pressure on the New Zealand batters. And if they can, if they can bat right through to the end of today and then have an hour at New Zealand, when the lights come on, it's a little bit darker. Um, they'll get more swing, move, more movement off the pitch as well in that particular uh, period of the day. I, th I think they can really get on top of New Zealand here. So it's about batting to after tea today and also having an hour out the New Zealand batters tonight in the best conditions for bowling. So for me, 320 uh, will be, give them enough time to be able to uh, get that operation done with, with that scenario. Good question there, Dax. Okay, next question, Shubs. Achit Roy, do you think more neutral venue matches should be added as it's interesting for both teams because they don't have their home advantages? Um. Archit, what what I um, in the in the finals? Yes, I don't think anyone should have home ground advantage in the final. But when it comes to regulation uh, season, or uh, you go over the two year period, I've I've said it a couple of times. I think they should put the Test match championship um, in two divisions. So you have a top five, I think it was, or top six, and a bottom six. Um, hang on, top five. I can't remember. I'll have to go back through my notes. But you play three test matches home against an opposition and three test matches away against the opposition. And I think you should get more points if you beat the opposition team uh, when you're away. So for me, I like the home and away series. For us as Australians, when we come to India, we know that we're going to struggle over there. It's about us adapting and... Um, beating you guys on your home soil because it's so foreign to us uh, with the spinning pitches that you put on. But when you come over here, we get that extra bounce, we get a little bit more sea movement, and it's up to you guys to counteract that, and you've done it really well over the last couple of years. So for me, I like the home and away uh, series, but when it comes to a final, yes, the neutral venues, um, but not on, not on uh, regulation uh, test matches when you're trying to work your way to get up the ladder to get into that World Test Championship final. Good question there, Archit. Beautiful question. Uh, who have we got here? Sorry, I've got to put my glasses on. Um, Hashit Varma, how are you going, mate? Good. Uh, thanks very much for joining me. Hoggy, do you think Rishba Pant could be better in England conditions, better than any other Indian batsman? Rishpa Pant, this is going to be a very interesting um, couple of months for him over in English conditions with the Duke ball moving. Um, I'm, I'm, just, I'm going to be interested to see how his game plan changes if it does. Is he going to play that attacking game or is he just going to consolidate and be a little bit more defensive? So I'm really looking forward to it. I, th I hope he goes after the bowling. Um, if he does, it would be good counteract to good swing bowling so it's going to be a real good question uh, contest um, the right hand swing bowler swinging the ball in is probably the big issue for him because he's got a bit of a big backswing and he goes hard out the ball and uh, just trying to adjust to the ball coming in to stop it from getting on his pads will probably be his um, kryptonite in English conditions. If the ball's swinging away, you're going hard at it, that's all right because if it uh, seems or swings a lot, 
uh, it's very hard to chase the ball uh, with that swing that he has. So, you know, it's good in a sense when the ball's moving away, but that swing that he has is not good when the ball's moving in as sharply it is over in uh, England conditions. So I'm really looking forward to that contest today. Um, he's one of my favourite players to watch, just his aggression. Um, he has an attitude that he's got no fear. It's just sensational. He is going to be a superstar over the next 10 years. So, Rich Papart, looking forward to seeing how he goes in uh, English conditions with the Duke ball. Next question, please, Shubs. VKN, how are you going? Uh, if bad light or rain comes into the match scenario unexpected, is it necessary for the ICC to add an extra reserve day? Um, I, I'm just thinking that with the conditions down there, I think the ICC should talk to both teams um, and ask to see if they want to have an extra reserve day because I think it should be. It, the test match has been thrilling so far. It's not a high-scoring affair, but just the way that the batsmen are fighting and hanging in there against good quality swing bowling and seam bowling, uh, it's something that we're all sitting on the edge of our seats for. It's a big contest. It's the first World Test Match Championship final. I think the ICC should get on the front foot and say, right, uh, are we able to get another reserve day? Let's do all we can to get that extra reserve day in this particular test match. We can always um, change the rules because we want a result. We don't want to draw in this uh, in this test match final. So for me, I agree with you. We should be able, the ICC should be able to step in and get the extra reserve day today. Okay, Shubs, next question, please. Sandeep Yadav, how are you going? Which Indian pacer do you think will be the most important for India? Um, oh, for me, I think it's going to be probably Ishant Sharma, uh, just with his extra height. If he can uh, just get that ball on a good length, attacking top, top of off stump, just with that extra height, on this wicket, I think he's going to be the key um, because he hits the seam well and he swings the ball back into the right-handers, but with that seam movement, every now and then he's going to get one to jag away and he's going to force the New Zealand batters to keep playing at him. So he's probably going to be the one with the biggest wicket-taking potential uh, on these conditions. With the ball moving away from the right-hander, as we've seen with India, you can play and miss a lot. So I, th I think Ishan Sharma isn't going to get as many play and misses. He will probably get more edges than the uh, other two in Boomerah and Shami. And that's only in these conditions, and I think they've done well to pick uh, Ishan Sharma on these conditions. Um, so for me, I think he's going to be the key in this particular contest. Uh, KD, KD, uh, KD, KD, how are you going, mate? Thanks very much for your little donation. Who holds the key for both teams? Win for India or New Zealand? So for me, the key for New Zealand are the two opening batsmen. Um, Conway, I think, at the moment, uh, apart from Williams, is probably the best batsman in this New Zealand lineup. I know he's only played two test matches, but the form that he's showing, um, his aptitude, it just shows me that he's the bee's knees in uh, in Test cricket moving forward, and Latham, uh, Latham with the bat, uh, he can't afford to get wrapped on the pads. LBW with the ball swinging in. If those two can get a good partnership for New Zealand uh, and fight their way back into this contest, that is that's probably the key for New Zealand. Uh, for India, I think the key. Is Ishan Sharma just with that extra height, ball moving in, and uh, with natural sea movement moving away off the deck? I think that's going to uh, confuse the New Zealand batsmen and produce a lot more weak wicket taking deliveries on this particular pitch. So, they are the three keys for me in this match. I think India are in the position right now to uh, win the game because if they bat, get 320, 350, they have a chance on these conditions to. Um, force the follow on if they bowl New Zealand out cheaply with the reserve day um, or with one day being washed out it's harder for New Zealand now to chase the game um, so India at the moment are in the box seat for me even though it's even Stevens on the scoreboard it uh, just depends if India get 350 that's where the game's going to be won and uh, lost 
So India, 350, and India will win this test match from here. Okay, Rana Yadav, how are you going, mate? Uh, what about damp or patches on pitch? Will we see more spin in upcoming days on this wicket? I think, uh, Rana, I think with the footmarks that are being created here, um, I think, and with New Zealand having both left-hand and right-hand quicks bowling on this wicket and bowling first, the spinners in Ashwin and Jardiv can utilise those uh, those footmarks and uh, be quite a handful to the New Zealand batters, especially on the final day of this test match because, obviously, they're batting first, so they'll get uh, last... Uh, pick on bowling on the last day, and that's when it's got, probably going to be most conducive to uh, spin. And so I saw um, Shane Warne tweet the other day, when the ball's swing, um, seeming, generally it seems. And that's what it's like over in Australia, and that's what uh, sometimes it's like over in England. So I do agree with him in that aspect, and that's where New, um, India have a better balanced lineup because they have be better spin options that they can play in these conditions. And with the footmarks that are happening there as well, it's just going to be a lot harder for New Zealand batters to face those two particular um, spinners from India. So for me, that even makes it more uh, interesting moving forward and more advanced to India uh, going into the latter stages of this test match. Uh, Prateek, how are you going? Thanks very much for your uh, little contribution there. You think Pajara's style of playing is justified even though it worked in an Australian tour, but in English conditions, would this style of batting work? Over in, uh, in Australia, the ball doesn't swing as much uh, as it gets older, whereas in England, the ball can continue to keep swinging uh, as it gets older, and this is where Pajara's technique um, starts to sort of uh, probably cause a few more issues than not. As we saw yesterday, it took him a long time to get off the mark, and if, uh, if the batsman at the other end is in flow and uh, in rhythm, if he's taking up too many balls by not getting off the mark, it's going to be put pressure on the batsman at the other end. And uh, that could create a little bit of impatience from the bat batter who's in and cause a wicket or two um, with, with his partner at the other end. But in saying that, I just like the aspect that he's willing to bat time and if he bats a long period of time in the first innings, it wears the opposition bowlers down. And when, you, when you're going to come up against England in a four or five test match series, um, those first that first test match, wearing the older bowlers down like Broad and Anderson is going to be key. So Pajara in that first test match against England um, is going to be very, very vital for him to bat a long innings just to wear the opposition bowlers down. And this is this is the strategies that you've got to think in a series is, right, first test match, wear the opposition bowlers down, and then they have to make changes and bring in someone new and disrupt uh, their main playing 11. So Bajara is going to be very important in that aspect. And Pratik, that is a very, very good question because... Yesterday he did struggle a bit, and um, yeah, and it's not really giving India as much of a, of an advantage as what he did here in Australia, um, because the new batsman coming in after him is coming into a ball that is still swinging sharply, not one that's coming straight like it was uh, down here in Australia. So good, very good observation there, Pratik. Love it, mate, and thanks very much for your contribution. Have we got another question there, Shubs? Yes, Dr. Raj Kishore Shari. How are you, mate? Uh, hope all is well with you. Um, ask Hoggy, what's your views on Virat as subcontinent player? Love to cover drive, but he is keeping his ego side and defending the balls. Um I, I just think he's been. Uh, I think he's summing up the conditions beautifully wherever he bats uh, around the world. I just I love his cover drive. Yesterday, the cover drive that he played to get off the mark, or the first boundary that he got, was probably the best shot I have seen in the last two years. It was just beautiful, perfect, brilliant. Um, but for me, I think Virat Kohli sums up conditions well. He knows when to play those attacking shots, knows when to defend, and that's why 
Uh, he's up there in the top three best players in the world. Um, he and Kane Williams are probably the two, uh, one and two top players in the world in all three formats. And uh, that's why he's done so well in English conditions yesterday. 44 not out. I'm not going to say what I'm expecting him to get because I don't want to put the wood on him. I want to I want to watch him bat more, but I think he's going to get a big score. Okay, Shubs, all right, we haven't got any more questions. Thanks very much for joining me on a Sunday, guys. I know you've got your Sunday off. Go out, spend plenty of time with your family, loved ones, and, uh, yeah, have a great day with plenty of smiles on your face and later on in the afternoon over there in India and uh, over in America, Sri Lanka. Let's join in and watch the World Test Championship final. It's going to be an absolute cracking uh, day today, and I'm expecting some uh, wickets to tumble and New Zealand to be put on the back foot with a lot of pressure, but they've got a lot of batting depth. Uh, their bowlers can uh, hang in there at the, at the end, so India have got their work out with the ball as well. All right, thanks very much, guys. Have a good day.